All right, joining me in studio today on the Danny Picard Show is the one and only John Doomsday Howard. John, yeah. what's going on? Welcome to Beantown Athletics here in your hometown of Dorchester. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me. This is awesome, and actually, um, man, this is not. This is definitely my neighborhood. It's funny. I used to come to the store and um buy wrestling shoes. So this is awesome. Home away from home. Man. How awesome. were those wrestling shoes that you bought here? Though, be honest. Awesome. They awesome. Were. I had them for a long, long time. It was the old school uh, tie-up. You don't have to lie to be <laughs> nice to me just because my studio's in their shop. Like, you can tell me the truth. If they were shit wrestling shoes, we can go with that. And you have to, you can tell me the truth right now. Dude, if they're shit wrestling shoes, I would definitely tell you. I have <laughs> I have no problem being shy or, you know, handling the situation. But, no, nah, they were awesome. They were awesome. Man. All right, so you're in Dorchester today. You're in Boston doing some things. You're going to the YMCA tonight, 6 o'clock, right, on Huntington Ave. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to talk about tonight. Um, what I want to talk about that is perseverance and um, training in my neighborhood and letting my kids know that um, even though I come from the same place that they came from, that it is possible, you know. Um, I, I'm here in a situation where I'm in the same neighborhood, same schools and everything, and that uh, I made it to the UFC, and I'm now, I'm now literally a world-famous fighter. Mm -hmm. And what I want to tell them, if I could do it, not only y'all could do it, y'all could do it better than me, and I want to help that. You know, a lot of kids um, growing up, when they saw me do MMA, they laughed at me like, there's no way you do MMA. That's, that's really not a sport for you. You don't come from certain backgrounds, but I prove everybody, everybody wrong that I did it. And now I want to share them with that. Like, listen, if I did it, you could do it. How old were you when you started training for MMA? I was uh, 18. When I first started training for MMA, I was 18. And people gave you a tough time they gave with me, that? Oh, they gave me a hell of a tough time. Man, uh, it was hard for me to get fans, people to come see my fights. Uh, it was hard for me to get fights. It, it was so it was a struggle to have, but it was all worth it. But wait, who gave you a tough time? Like kids in high school or just friends from home? I mean... I'm, I would say more for um, friends from home. Some kids from high school who find out the MMA, but it's, it's more in the MMA circuit, M MMA community that you know, I came up in. They gave me a tough time because I, I have a certain background. I already come from a certain neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, they thought I was just, you know, this stupid, dumb, don't just a kid, you know, that shouldn't be belong here. But I prove everybody wrong. You know, of all the fighters locally around, I'm the one of the fighters who made it to the UFC, even though a lot of people doubted me. I still made it to them and proved to them that I, be I belong there. So what's the, what was that moment? Where people started taking you seriously. What did you have that one moment where maybe you either knocked somebody out or you took someone down that you nobody expected you to? Do you have that one moment you think back and say, This is where people started saying, Oh, there's Doomsday. We can't, you know, we can't mess around with him anymore. Yep. The one moment that 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 solidified who I was and I was definitely UFC bound is when I fought this game named a guy named um Mandela Computo. That was my third fight in my MMA career. He was the best in New England at the time. I was just coming up. And uh, it was a hell of a fight. It was a war of a war. And um, the kid was beating me up. I had some looks in, but he was getting the best of me. He broke my front tooth. You know, if guys don't know, you know, this is this is fake. This is fake. This is just uh, <laughs> I look kind of pretty, you know, and make, it makes my mother happy. I can smile again. But um, he broke my front tooth. And that was the first round. The second round, I spit my tooth out, and I came back, and I fought him. I broke, he his, I broke his ankle, made him top out, and I won the fight. So... That, that that fight right there made me doomsday to let everybody know, nope, that guy is serious. I'll tell you what happened. He saw you spit your tooth out coming at him. He shit his pants. I mean, can you, <laughs> can you imagine somebody taking their tooth out and saying, well, I'm not done yet. I'm still coming at you. That must be a pretty scary moment, even for another UFC fighter. Yeah, I think it was. I think once he saw that, he was like, whoa, this kid is serious. I just want to let him know that. Listen, yeah, you might be better than me, but my heart is it's, it's, it's too strong. You know, you have to you have to kill me before I, I give up. So that, that's why I proved to him. So there's a new youth MMA program that you'll be talking about tonight called Level Ground, right? You'll be speaking again at the YMCA of Greater Boston, located at 316 Huntington Ave. It begins at 6 o'clock, free and open to all teens. I mean, do you expect any, and I don't know if, the, if you've heard, asked this question before, but do you expect any backlash from anyone having an MMA thing for, for teens, for youth? You know what I mean? Um, like, I actually know. I think it's a positive outlet. It's about time for some of these kids to find some other sports, you know, um, and it's a perfect alley. Like, you know, a lot of kids could do boxing, do other sports, but MMA is, is right up that alley. And I would love to be that, you know, that resource, you know, that you don't have to, to resort to, you know, unnecessary stuff outside the streets. You get, you can focus all your energy and all actual curriculum activity into MMA. Mm. You know, not even if you want to fight, just to be disciplined. There's a lot of people I teach just to stay in shape and discipline and discipline martial artists. So I, I, I'm all for it. No, I agree. I, I, I bring that up because I agree, not because I mean, to, <laughs> you know, start a little uh, fight about this situation. But Level Ground seems like a great program. You'll be speaking about that tonight, but you also have a fight coming up. 
Yes, I have a December fight. December 10th. December 10th, me and Tim Mees in, um, in Vegas, and it's going to be a great fight. A Muay Thai fighter versus Muay Thai, and uh, I, I'm expecting nothing but fireworks. You called it a technique versus power fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're the power. I'm the power. I'm taking that. And he, he, he's the technique. Um, what it is is that he's more long and more uh, finesse. I'm more short, stocky, and power. You know, so it's power versus technique. And let's, let's see what happens. I'm really confident. You know that I'm gonna get the victory on uh, December 10th. And you just signed a new four fight contract. Yes. Right. And, and it happened after you got a win in July, UFC 189. Yes. Right. Well, and how big was that win for you? Because you had lost a couple in a row. So that was was that a, the type of fight that you're going into it saying this is a must win. If I don't win this, I don't know where my career is going to go. Or what? How big was that win for you? That big was real serious. It, it proved to the world. It proved to me that I still belong there. I still I'm still hungry for the sport. And it was a must, must situation that I need to win because uh, I, mean, I had three losses before for that, and I just wanted to prove that I belong there. I wanted to get that win, you know. But uh, I got the win, and UFC honored me with a forward um, fight deal, and um, I'm so appreciative. Thank you, Joe Silva, Dana White, UFC. Thank you. you. You're fighting Tim Means. It's UFC Fight Night 80. It's a Thursday night. Watch it on Fight Pass at www.ufc.tv. Uh, two nights later... It's UFC. Now, the numbers are confusing to me because you got Fight Night 80, but then you got UFC 194 two nights later. You just fought in 189. That's whatever. That's for another time. But 194 <laughs> is two nights later. Yeah. And you know the big fight there, McGregor Aldo. Are you going to be paying attention to that of one? Course, or? Of course. Of course. So you do fight. watch all the fights. Of course I watch all the fights. I'm not only a, I'm not only a, a, a fan. I'm a client. <laughs> that being said, but, you know. But I, you watch it a little bit differently, right? I love, Since you're a fighter. Like, do you will you watch McGregor Aldo? And go, I, I could I can take him in this round. Like I, I could I could take this guy maybe if I dropped down a little bit or if he came up and we met in the middle. Def like will you watch that fight and, and will those dots go through your head, McGregor Aldo? Definitely. Anybody I watch, it doesn't matter a heavyweight, uh middleweight, fellow weight, I always um picture myself. I ever made that weight where they came to my weight class, how to beat them and how to move around and everything like that. Um, especially with um Aldo McGregor. McGregor I like to watch because his movement is amazing. People talk a lot of trash about him, it's like, oh, it's too early in his career for the ship yourself. I, I'm all for him. I'm all for him. I like it because I like his movement. I like his style. And he he he's so stubborn and so sure of himself. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna study my opponent and do what I do best. And that's mm -hmm. what he does. And I, I love his movement and style right it, it's it's so on key on point. Speaking with uh, John Doomsday Howard joins me in studio today on the Danny Picard Show. He's got a fight coming up December 10th, and tonight he's speaking at the YMCA of Greater Boston. Um, John, do you watch, you know, MMA, but do you watch fighting? Do boxing, I mean. Do you watch any, like, coming up? Are you going to watch Canelo, Cotto? You going to pay attention to that? Are you just strictly MMA? Uh, no, I watch Canelo. I, I watch Canelo. Can I, I still watch boxing here and there. You know, I'm only, I always say more into MMA, but I still watch the boxing. I still give um, boxing props. You know, boxing is part of the MMA. It's just one aspect of fighting. Because it's the debate that I always have with anybody yeah. that I talk to that's involved in MMA or in boxing. Like yeah. you guys, you guys don't like each other, right? Uh, no, no we don't like you. We don't. It's not that we don't like each other. Is we we perceive each other as who's had a better sport. Uh -huh. I believe we have a better sport because uh, boxing is just hands. MMA is everything from grappling hands, kickboxing. It, you, there's so many ways you can win a fight. Boxing is either decision or knockout, which is, is entertaining and depends who's fighting. MMA, you never know. The guy could be winning, winning 15 minutes of a whole fight, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, submission, knockout, or something crazy. Boxing doesn't really happen like that. Happens more than MMA than um, boxing. That being said, that's why MMA, you're always on your seat because you never know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, so we mentioned boxing, but... I have to ask you because mm -hmm. we ha and I talk about this all the time as well. A Dana White and Vince McMahon in cahoots. <laughs> I like. Is there something going on there? Like, what's going on there? Honestly, not, I need to know because I'm a WWE uh, fan. Honestly, so not. I need to know what's going on with UFC WWE. I mean, let me let me break it down. You got Lesnar. You got Ronda Rousey was in the ring at WrestleMania. You got CM Punk coming over to UFC. <sighs> What's going on with Vince McMahon and Dana White? Are they in cahoots? I have no clue. Uh, you got you ask um, Uncle Dana for that one. I have. We're no trying clue. to get him in. I don't yeah, think he. he I don't think he's gonna come in. <laughs> you have to ask him. I, I don't know. I just uh, that's my boss. I just work for him. But um, obviously he's a small businessman, and you see what's happening, and it's just great things for us. Is it great things for CM Punk? You already called him out, right? You already <laughs> yeah, called, called You called out CM called Punk. Him. Of course. Uh, WWE wrestling come, come to MMA. You know, of course I want to be the one of the first guys to, to fight him. You know, I think CM Punk is a great uh, WWE wrestler, but I don't think he's a MMA, a UFC caliber MMA fighter. 
And I'd like to be the first to test that. He's at 185, but I'm a welterweight. You know, I'll come up away and fight him. I'll definitely welcome that. What are you at right now? Right now, I'm 190, but I'm cutting weight. <laughs> so What do you have to fight at? Uh, 170. 170. Yeah. You got to get down 20 pounds in the next month. Yeah, that's nothing. That, that's nothing. That, that's nothing. You can do that. I could do it. I could do 20 pounds a day. I just right now, I just rather do it safely because uh, it's, it's better for my body. But they would never put CM Punk in the octagon with you right now. No, not right now. I, but no. maybe a couple. But you just signed a fourth fight contract. Maybe you. Maybe a fourth fight. Maybe he has a couple under his belt. Maybe. He, hey, it's possible. I mean, are you still sticking to your guns in that one? You, I'm still you take my guns. I don't care. He has, you want that I, fight with CM Punk? I want that fight. I don't care if he has one fight, four fights, ten fights, whatever. I'll still wait. I, let's say what happens. He just won four fights in a row. I'll still be waiting to fight him. But do you look at that and think that's a publicity stunt? Like he's just going to run back to Vince McMahon and WWE and they're just using this to get promotion for UFC? It, uh, um, or vice versa with the promotion? I don't think so. I think it's more of a, uh, to prove that he, he could hang with the best of the uh, athletes. You and know? you don't think he can? Uh, I, I Honestly, I don't. Brock Lesnar was an exception. He was an NCAA champion mm -hmm. of wrestling. He, he's a beast. I mean, he out-wrestled Randy Couture. Randy Couture couldn't win to the Olympics of wrestling. So he's an exception. Um, Brock came to uh, UFC to prove that he does belong with the top 10. And he proved himself. He became the world champion. CM Punk, on the other hand... Um, I think he does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Maybe he trains in there, but I don't think he's UFC caliber. Caliber. But if you want to prove that you UFC caliber, definitely fight me. I'm a lower weight. I'll make 185. Let's do it. Let, let's see what's up. You, if you think you're UFC caliber, let's do it. I would like to fight him. All right. So uh, you're fighting December 10th. Uh, you're sitting here in Dorchester. Uh, this is good to do an interview in your hometown, right? I mean, yeah. have you done one of these? Is there any other studio in Dorchester that nah, you can go to right now? There isn't, right? There isn't. You know, this is the only one? This is the only one, man. This is the, this is the best feeling around. I'm literally, like, at home right now, and at the store I used to shop at, so it's, it's awesome, man. Where did you go to high school? I, I went to the, um, Burke. I went to Burke, and I transferred to Madison after. You played football? Yes. And track? I yep. read? Yep. You ran track? I ran track at um, football. Actually, at uh, freshman year, I, I hit varsity right off the back. So I was uh, I was a tailback. I was short and stocky. Okay. And, uh, I can see that. Yeah. I can always hide behind the uh, linemen. So anytime they, they they can't find me, I just get real low and just take off. Once I hit the line, I was out. Uh, you're a big Patriots fan. Yes. What's your favorite favorite sport outside of MMA? My favorite sport? it has. I'm going to say it's actually between uh, football and hockey. Football and hockey. Yeah. Okay. Re reason why hockey is the most uh, related thing to uh, MMA because hockey is go 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 go, and MMA is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And MMA um, and hockey, you only have like a you only have like a thirty second burst and then you have, have to recover. So it's like it's the same thing. So I I, I love both the sports. Uh, but b because I play football, I'm about to lean towards football. Football is my thing. I mean, I could have I, I think I could have went to the NFL. And have it have things fell into place. Patriots going undefeated. Yes, they're going to defeat it. Uh, Do you oh, yes. say that just as a Patriots fan? Or are you looking at it realistically at their schedule, thinking no one's going to beat them? I I think it because they people hate hate and talk, talking trash with the ball deflation and all that and everything like right, with cheaters all this. I think that's just make, making more motivation for Patriots to prove that like, you know what we are the champions. Not only are the champions, we go undefeated. This to show y'all. That's to show you we are the best. And so we should get Goodell in the octagon. Roger Goodell. <laughs> yes. After that shit. No, that would, the, the be, uh, yes, that would be awesome. Yes. What are you awesome. thinking when that's going on? Uh, I, like, just... you played football. <laughs> if, if, if a couple PSIs, would you even notice if somebody handed you a football in high school and there was a, the two PSIs <laughs> no. short of what it should be? You no. wouldn't know, right? You, you can't know it's like that. That, that, the... the the, the detail of that to notice that is insane. You have to be, you have to have a machine to notice that. So that to know that failed, there's, there's no way. I, I I doubt that. Maybe it's possible, but I I don't think so. All right, John. Uh, listen. Thanks for coming in. We're gonna get you some Beantown Athletics gear Word. before you leave. That's we don't have. Up. I don't think they have wrestling sneakers anymore <laughs> uh, in here. I, I don't think to so. give you. Uh, thank you, man. But um, tonight again, speaking at the YMCA of Greater Boston, located on 316 Huntington Ave. Uh, he'll be talking about Level Ground, the new youth MMA program. Uh, there will also be a demonstration after you speak. Yes, right? be a few demonstrations, a few. Uh, they have the octagon set up. Oh yeah. Uh, and then? No, no, they have some mats. Um, mats. Maybe, maybe they have the octagon. Hey. We, 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 maybe. Might maybe. maybe we might get lucky. Maybe free and open to all teens begins at six o'clock. And again, the fight is December tenth in Las Vegas. You can get that at Fight Pass www.ufc.tv. He is John Doomsday Howard. John, thanks again for coming in. Hey, Best of luck. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys, here comes the doom.